Okay, in this series of videos, what I would like to do is show you the construction of a linked list and the construction of an array list, and then compare the performance differences between these two architectures. We'll do this with Java in the Eclipse IDE, although in principle it doesn't matter which language we use because the performance characteristics, the relative performance characteristics, of linked lists and array lists are going to be the same regardless of your language. So the first thing to do is to um, identify what are the properties of a list in general. Well, abstractly, a list is a collection of items that are ordered linearly. This is a kind of collection in which the order of the data is important. The order of the first one versus the second one is something that you want the data structure to um, maintain. It's also okay to have duplicate data elements in this collection. So it's okay if the first or second or third or fourth is, contains the same data as one of the other nodes in this, um, in this collection. Now this is the abstract idea of a list, but when it comes time to actually construct one, we need a particular architecture. Regardless of which architecture we use, the abstract list will have a series of methods that are consistent across all implementations. So for example, if we would like to know what the data is that is stored at the beginning or the end, we might say get first or get last. If we want to remove elements from the list, changing its length, we might say remove first or remove last. If we would like to increase its length by adding things to the beginning or the end, we might say add first or add last. And then if we would like to see how many elements in our list, we can call size and get the number of elements in our list returned to us. If we would like to do a random access and look at a particular data element somewhere in this list, we can say get and pass in the index of the element that we're looking for. So get zero, for example, is equivalent to get first, but get one doesn't have a single method equivalent. Finally, the last thing we might want to do is something called get iterator. That's going to give us an abstract iterator that can walk down this list regardless of the implementation and allow us to do more nuanced changes to the list in the middle of the list as we go along. So what is an iterator going to entail? Well, an iterator has its own set of methods. Once we have that iterator available to us, it's going to conceptually point to a position between or before or after any of the nodes, but never at the nodes themselves. So here's an example of a list, and the first three elements are A, B, and C. Our iterator has the methods hasNext, which tells us whether there's something following the current position of the arrow or the iterator. In this case, it's true. The iterator does have a next element, and that next element is A. If we would like the iterator to move, and move over that element and return it, we call next. And as it moves over that element, next is going to return the element over which it passes. So the first time we call next in th with this iterator on this list, we'll get an A back. If we call it again, we're going, to we're going to get the next element, or B. And finally, if we call it a third time, we'll get C back as the returns for iterator. If we would like to add something to this list, we can call add with the element that we would like to add. And in this case, the element would appear after C, but before the first blank element. If we'd like to remove an element after we have gone, after we have called next at least one time, we can call remove. And in this case, remove would remove the C node. Finally, if we'd like to change what the list contains, we can call set after we have called next at one point so that we have at least passed over one element in which case we can change the element, for example here, from C to D. Those are the abstract things that you can do with any implementation of the list that we're going to do, that we're going to build. There are two kinds of lists that we're going to build then. The first one is a linked list implementation. Now a linked list implementation is going to achieve these different methods and the iterator methods by representing each element of our list as a node. These nodes will not be available to people that are using our linked list, to programmers that are using our, our list, because they only have access to the methods that I previously described. But internally, as we create iterators, as we add and remove elements, we'll be manipulating objects which are instances of the node class. They have data within them, and they also have a reference to the next node in the chain. Notably, in order to get to any particular node in this chain, what you have to do is you have to follow the links from one element to, a next, to the next. Another implementation of a list that we could use is an array list, and we'll look at this as well. An array list starts not with node instances internally, but with a primitive array. Initially, that primitive array has one element in it, 
and as you add data to it, you run out of space and need to double its size. As you add data to it again, you run out of space and need to double its size. And eventually you add data and run out of size and you continue doubling as, as needed in order to create space for the array. This array is then uh, mediated by calls to the linked list so that the same interface is presented whether it's an array list or a linked list. But the performance characteristics of the list are different because of these different choices of architecture. Okay, so next what we'll do is we'll implement a linked list in order to show you these different components.